All right, uh, let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, this is the last day of Dreamforce, and uh, we'll make sure this next 20 minutes we will go fast. The topic we are covering here is uh, how to fine tune your LLM, which is large language models, using your data from the data cloud. Okay, so let's uh, jump in. I'm sure you have seen this slide many times in the last three days. Uh, not sure if you all read it carefully, so let's spend next few minutes in reading it carefully, okay? So this presentation contains, you know I'm kidding, uh, the TLDR here is, uh, we will be sharing some of the roadmap items here, so don't make your purchasing decision on what's coming in the future. Uh, and so uh, that, that's kind of the, uh, the main gist here. With that, uh, we want to thank you again. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of uh, Ohana family. Uh, and with that, I want to introduce uh, Daryl Martis, who is a product manager, uh, director of product management in Einstein AI platform team. My name is Manjeet Singh. I'm Daryl and I are uh, partnering uh, in building this capability for you. Before I go into the agenda, uh, let's do a quick show of hands. Uh, how many of you uh, have worked with large language models in a production environment? Let's, let's show hands, okay. Okay, so I think six, seven of you. Uh, another question is, uh, let's show your hand again. How many of you actually fine tuned the model so far? Okay. No worries, if, you, if, if fine tuning is new to you, we will quickly kind of demystify it for you. But here is our rough agenda. We will start with what is the problem, why this model needs fine tuning. Then we will share our approach, how we are bringing this capability into the platform, as in platform fine tuning capability. Then we will walk in through some of the use cases, and then we will share our, like, what's, what's getting released and what's the uh, forthcoming roadmap, okay? So fine tuning at a very high level is you take a pre-trained model and then you want to feed in some extra knowledge to the model. So what do you do is uh, you take your own, uh, some of your examples, you feed those examples to the, to the model and go through a fine tuning process. But some of you who started your journey with prompt engineering or you started your journey with uh, creating RAG apps so this one question I get very frequently is, uh, hey, do we still need, have a need for fine tuning? The answer is yes. It's a maturity model. You always start with, you know, uh, by creating prompts using Prompt Builder, and that takes you quite far. You can build out a lot of use cases, a lot of our customers have done it. And then you start to ground your, uh, your, your, your answers uh, with the data in the data cloud. So that's where RAC comes into play. The good news is in last, this, in the last one year, the context window length has increased, the RAG applications and the, all the embedding models are kind of getting better and better. So the need for fine tuning will not be there in the beginning. But here are some reasons for you why you need fine tuning. Okay, so if you're thinking about, hey, I can continue to make my prompts bigger and bigger, what happens is uh, if you feed that prompts to your LLM, LLM might completely ignore you what's in the middle. Uh, we, uh, we have seen it many times, so it will take what's in the front, it will take what, what in the back, and so what happens is the quality of your response will not be as good as it was you're expecting to. Second is very obvious, the bigger the prompts, you are consuming more tokens, which means you are consume, you know, it's costing you more. Then the same thing happens when you are, you know, start creating a lot of rag apps, then you have to deal with, uh, hey, how the data is flowing, uh, and it, uh, you have to think about the guardrails. Uh, and that's where most, some customers, they reach to a point where like, hey, is there a better approach for me to, uh, me to give this knowledge to the model, okay? And one analogy I'll give you is, uh, see, general intelligence, intelligence is good. When you look at a big model, you can ask any questions like, hey, the, you know, recite a poem for me. But if I'm a you know, point of sales you know, uh, working on, I don't want my model to recite a poem. I want it to answer exactly what I'm asking for. So that's where fine tuning comes into play. And we have literally simplified the implementation into our product. 
as I was, I, as I was saying, you start with a pre-trained model, and the recommendation here is uh, you start with small models, right? And my rough definition of small model is anything, you know, sub 10 billion parameters. Uh, that's where we are seeing the biggest benefit. You take the small model, and then you get some examples of how you want your model to behave, okay? And then we'll walk you through how do you create this data set. Then what do you do is uh, you pick a fine tuning technique. Uh, we are supporting these two, the most common ones. One is uh, instruction tuning, so that's where the first one is supervised fine tuning using LoRa. Uh, and then the second is preference optimization, which is your reinforcement learning by giving examples of, hey, what is a good response and what is not a good response. Then what you do is uh, you kickstart your fine tuning job. The good thing is uh, don't worry about the cost. The reason is this LoRa based fine tuning is very, very quick. It only takes 30 minutes. It costs very little tokens, but it gets the job done. It, you are feeding those da data sets and making your model learn how to respond better, how to respond faster, and, and that gets you the benefit. Uh, so if you look at the life cycle, it's literally three steps. Uh, you take a pre-trained model. So uh, our favorite is uh, you know, Mistral or Llama, uh, Llama models. Take some examples, submit the fine-tuning job, and then the last step is you test it out and then see if it's uh, working uh, uh, or responding better than your previous responses. Uh, quickly highlighting some of the benefit. See, the, we are in this world of where we have the large models and then we have the small models. And we are seeing this trend in, across our customers. They will be in this like the, you know, the hybrid scenario where you know, for the most complex task, you are using a large models and then a lot of small models. And that's where some of these benefits you see, the cost benefit. If it's a smaller model, it will respond to you fast. The quality, that's the number one. That's where we are you know, the seeing a lot of benefits where, hey, I want this model to summarize my response in a better way. Or I want my, this model to speak my brand voice. I'm a legal customer or I'm a banking customer. I want this model to speak my brand voice. Uh, so you'll, we'll talk about more on the use cases in a second. The other benefit is having it as part of the platform, you're not only training, the another important step is testing. So that's where you get to benefit, uh, use, like how do you test using Prompt Builder uh, or, or, or Prompt Playground, or how do you test, uh, you are going to test it with testing centers, which you may have heard about, it's coming soon. So we are happy to share this capability is getting released very, very soon uh, in next couple of weeks in October. And uh, we will have some uh, good use cases as part of the templates, so that gives you quick start. Uh, and, uh, and since this is kind of a developer theaters and you know, developer persona is our favorite, the first release we are making is an API-based release. Uh, so quick snapshot here from the Postman. So there's two APIs. API, first API is for creating your fine-tuning job. So basically what you do is, hey, pick a model, uh, Mistral 7B. Then you say, this is my use case. And then you provide your data, submit the job, and then the second job is to get the status and deploy. So, uh, and, and that gives you the kind of the what is needed, uh, and that's the pilot is coming in a couple of weeks. Um, so with that, I think to make it a little bit of more concrete, uh, we will walk you through the use cases and uh, uh, Daryl, why don't you help out and uh, talk about some use cases here. Thank you very much, Manjeet. All right, let's talk about some uh, common use cases for fine tuning. Uh, one is brand voice alignment. What that means is setting the tone, the style, the format, and other aspects. Uh, and an example here is a large retailer aligning their brand voice to the customer service replies. Another one is better summarization. So that means improved summarization results with a certain key terminology that your company may have and uh, have it in a context specific, specific manner. Uh, an example that we've seen is a, uh, a legal tech company auto automating uh, the summarization of lengthy and complex legal documents. 
Uh, and a third example here is structured output, which is improving reliability and producing a desired output. So uh, an example of, uh, that we're working with a uh, large tech company, fine tuning for a consistent text to SQL result. Now, uh, the data set that you're, you're going to use to fine tune your models is very important. <clears throat> Like Manjit mentioned, there are two ways to uh, fine tune. There's supervised fine tuning and RLHF. Uh, we are going to concentrate here, at least par as part of the pilot, on supervised fine tuning. That requires two fields, the input and the response, while as uh, RLHF requires three fields, input, preferred response, and the rejected response. So there's that feedback loop that's, uh, that's part of it. Uh, brand voice data set, uh, in this example, we're going to walk through a brand voice data set. That requires initially about 30 good examples. The more you give it, of course, the better your brand voice, the better uh, the fine-tuned result. So in the first case, let's say you have a scenario of a sales email, and uh, you give it a description that says, uh, you know, you want this brand voice to be friendly, informative, and solution-oriented. And the input data here will say, hi, uh, we noticed that you were interested in our product, it's perfect for your custom, for your needs. And uh, you give it a example uh, desired response, saying, uh, you know, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but subject unveiling the perfect solution, uh, hi, you know, and, and it aligns very well with it being friendly, informative, and solution oriented, that you have examples along these lines that you give as part of your data prep. Another one is customer service chat, you want it to be empathetic, helpful, and solution oriented. Uh, an example of the input data you say is, hi there, how can I assist you today? And the desired response is, thank you for reaching out, we're happy to help you in any way we can. Uh, what can we do for you today? So these are just some examples, very important to have uh, good data prep there. Now let's walk through a design demo of how this solution would look. We've talked about the API, but how would it look? We want to give, it, uh, give our customers a uh, a no-code, easy-to-use uh, way to, to fine-tune their models. So in this example, uh, we are going to give you the ability to fine-tune uh, on our Einstein platform with a few clicks within Model Builder. Uh, and the problem is that I am currently using OpenAI GPT 4.0 for my email replies, but the emails are not generated as per my brand voice and not, and not in a consistent output format. Uh, so we're looking to improve the model quality in a no-code tuning fashion and use a small uh, fine-tuned model to reduce the cost and generate the response in a desired output format. So you go into uh, Einstein Studio or Model Builder, like it's now called. There will be a button called Fine Tune on the top, uh, top right. You will then say uh, brand voice or summarization. You choose, you give the two different, uh, we'll give you two different options. Uh, let's say we're going to use brand voice, uh, and uh, uh, from there you choose which DMO your examples are in and which data space it's in. Initially, it will show you um, what, what is in that DMO itself, so you know what you're going to fine tune on. You will then uh, review this. We're going to make it very simple. Initially, we're going to uh, use uh, supervised fine tuning, and we'll choose the model for you, uh, which is a Mistral-based model. And uh, once that's done, that's it. You click Save and Train. And then within uh, 30 minutes to an hour, it, you, will be, uh, you will get a model trained. You'll get a message saying it's trained. And then you activate this model. You will also see the different evaluation metrics that we provide here. How does it compare against the actual base model? So you'll be able to further fine tune as well if you would, uh, if you would like. You can uh, then use that within Prompt Builder. So once you have a uh, configured model, you click on Create a Prompt, and that will bring you into Prompt Builder. And uh, you will see here on the, on the right side, this model will show up as a custom model within Prompt Builder. And it will, uh, the configured name here is a brand voice chatbot. And you can then try this uh, with, uh, you, can, you can try this out. You can uh, create your own prompt template. You can create your custom prompt template here. You can then use it within uh, server supplies, within agents, within Flow, Apex, uh, a lot of different ways in which you use large language models. Currently, with Salesforce, you'll be able to use it in the same fashion within the models API uh, as well. So that was a, a uh, quick uh, 
uh, overview of what we're looking to do. So three key takeaways here are, we're going to do a, um, a pilot on an API-based fine-tuning in, uh, in October, and uh, we have opportunities if you're interested in uh, to sign up as a pilot customer. There's limited spots. Please reach out to me. This is my email if you'd like to, uh, uh, if you'd like to email me. And please do share your feedback and help us influence the future roadmap of this product. Um, so thank you, thank you for being here, really appreciate it. We will, uh, we're going to take Q&A off the stage, so please come up to us and ask us any questions you have. So thank you for being here, appreciate it. All right, thanks everyone. We'll be hanging out on this side if you have questions. We'll be over here. Yeah. And also, coffee on us. Um, uh, yeah. The first 4,000 uh, attendees to provide feedback will get a $5 Starbucks gift card. So definitely uh, take a scan of this. It'll open up uh, My Events uh, app, and you can then click Surveys and provide that feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you.